Dual layer closure is an essential technique for improving the predictability of guided bone regeneration. Today I'm joined by two experts, both periodontists, both fantastic surgeons, Dr. Israel Putterman and Dr. Matthew Fine, or Implants DC and Fine Adonics if you follow them on Instagram. If you don't, I highly recommend looking into that. But uh, back to the topic at hand of dual layer closure. Dr. Putterman, will you describe what dual layer closure is? So the biggest reason for incision line dehiscence, incision line opening after guided bone regeneration is the fact that there's too much tension at the crest, at the incision line. So dual layer closure, what it does is it creates a more apical closure in addition to the crestal closure of having connective tissue to connective tissue to remove that tension off of the crest. How do you obtain dual layer closure in your surgical procedures? So what dual layer closure implies is that you're making a more apical closure in addition to the crestal closure. The more apical closure you're doing with a horizontal mattress suture, which you can have multiple of depending on how large the surgical site is. That horizontal mattress is made and then you have crestal simple interrupted sutures placed at the crest. Okay, and would you describe, just for those that don't fully understand, what a horizontal mattress suture is? Sure, so a horizontal mattress suture is typically going in with the suture through the buccal aspect, coming out the lingual aspect, going back in on the lingual aspect, and coming out the buccal aspect. You typically want that to be somewhere around five to seven millimeters from the crest. Okay, and Dr. Fine, what materials do you use when you're obtaining dual layer closure in your surgical cases? So I like to use a uh, non-resorbable suture material, something like a 3O PTFE, uh, to perform dual layer closure, and then we'll use um, the same suture material for the single interrupted sutures. Okay, and when you're obtaining these dual layer closures, are there pitfalls that should be avoided to minimize complications? Sure, great question. I, I think the biggest thing that we, we can do is make sure that we have adequate flap release you know, prior to performing our horizontal mattress sutures, like Dr. Putterman mentioned, um, and making sure that your bites are equidistant from the flap margin. And so if I'm going to enter the flap on the buckle side, five to seven millimeters from that flap margin, I want to do the same thing on the palatal side. Okay. Um, and I want to make sure that my, my bites are equidistant from each other as well. So when I'm entering on the buckle, five to seven millimeters from the flat margin and exiting on the lingual, and then we're going to move laterally five millimeters and we'll do the same thing on the buckle side. Okay, and then what is the time frame for suture removal for both the horizontal mattress and the single interrupted sutures? I like to make sure that we keep those sutures in place for a minimum of about two weeks. So I'm typically looking at the patient at two to three weeks post-op, removing the sutures at that time. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is that PTFE is so biocompatible, a lot of the time the soft tissue will actually start to grow over those, those uh, lingual or palatal loops. Um, so uh, one tip that I always tell, tell my students and, and any doctors that are asking is to keep your um, tails a little bit longer so you have something to grab onto so you can remove those sutures easily. Yeah, perfect. All right, thanks guys. So again, this is Implants DC, Fine Adonics. Give them a follow on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you.